this time on a &P Studios. We're looking at the knee joints of animals over at the San Diego Zoo and comparing them to the human knee joint. Hi, this is Elijah with a &P News. Now, although we're here at the San Diego Zoo talking about the knee joint, I'm gonna start off with the human. The human knee, also known as the genual joint, lies at the interface of the two longest bones in the body, the femur and the tibia. Now, this joint is important and it's essential in nearly all everyday life activities and also in athletic endeavors. Despite its size and importance to life, it is also the most vulnerable to severe injury in the body. The knee joint is the largest and most complex joint in the body. Despite its single joint cavity, the knee consists of three joints in one, an intermediate one between the patella and the lower end of the femur, and lateral and medial joints between the femoral condyles above the C-shaped menisci or semilunar cartilages of the tibia below. The knee joint is unique in that its joint cavity is only particularly enclosed by a capsule. The relatively thin articular capsule is present only on the sides and posterior aspects of the knee, where it covers the bulk of the femoral and tibial condyles. Anteriorly, where the capsule is absent, three broad ligaments run from the patella to the tibia below. These are the patellar ligament, flanked by the medial and lateral patellar retinacula, which merge imperceptibly into the articular capsule on each side. The extrascapular, fibular, and tibial collateral ligaments, the oblique popliteal ligament, and the accruciate popliteal ligament all reinforce and stabilize the knee joint. The knee's intrascapular ligaments are called cruciate ligaments because they cross each other forming an X in the notch between the femoral condyles. They act as restraining straps to help prevent anterior and posterior displacement of the articular surfaces and to secure the articulating bones when we stand. These are the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament. This is the impressive anatomy of the human knee joint. Now today, a &P News has a team here discussing the knee joints in different kind of interesting animals. Now first off, we have Rachel. The red kangaroo is a marsupial found in Australia. In man, the knee joint is the most complex of our articulations, and in the kangaroo, it's even more complex. When a kangaroo leaps, the knee joint becomes the center on which most of the strain is exerted, which means it must be a very strong and stable structure. And this stability comes from the arrangement of ligaments around the knee, which is also how a human knee gains its stability. Now a really interesting difference with the knee of the kangaroo is that it lacks a bony patella. In its place there's a fiber cartilage pad located in the tendon of the quadriceps femoris muscle. The structure is palpable and it still has the form that would be expected of a bony patella. Additionally, the femoral trochlear is shallow and asymmetric and the lateral gastronomia sesamoid is unusually prominent. These differences allow the kangaroo to have more shock absorbance, more strength, and more stability when it leaps around on its back legs. This is Rachel Haddon. Now we're going over to Jill in the elephant exhibit. Hi, as most of you already know, the elephant is one of the most popular animals to visit at the zoo. There are two different kinds of elephants, the African elephant and the Asian elephant and they both have distinct differences, but their knee joint is very similar. It's also very similar to the human knee joint. The only real difference is that the tibia femoris is a little bit taller. The knee joint is used to support their weight and for movement, but unfortunately elephants do not have the ability to jump. This is Jill, now over to Jessica at the flamingo exhibit. A common misconception about flamingos is that what appears to be part of their leg bending backwards is their knee. However, that's not true. It's actually their ankle that's bending backwards. Their knee is close up into the body and it's hard to see because it's covered by their plumage or their feathers. Therefore, it's not the knee that's bending backwards the wrong way, it's the ankle bending the right way. One reason that the ankle is thought to be the knee is because the bone below the knee joint, called the tarsomentarsis, looks like the shin. However, we now know that the knee joint is formed by the horizontal femur and the tibiotarsus bones. Flamingos have an impressive talent of standing on one leg. Part of this talent is contributed to the knee, which is connected to the horizontal femur. Unlike humans, the femur of the flamingo is modified by being horizontally oriented instead of vertically oriented. This is a great modification because it allows their center of gravity to be horizontally distributed instead of vertically like humans. Therefore, they're able to stand on one leg for periods of hours, whereas humans can only stand on one leg for periods of seconds. 
The lateral ligaments of the flamingos are well developed and are able to greatly to sustain stress which also contributes to their ability to stand on one leg. To keep their balance when standing on two legs, the knee joints are flexed, which places the knee joint near the center of gravity. The anterior trochanter, which is unique to birds, is located on the neck of the femur, and it absorbs stress to prevent abduction of the femur. So these are some pretty great birds. Now over to Landry and the lions. The lion is the second largest cat after the tiger, exceeding 550 pounds. Wild lions currently exist in the sub-Saharan desert and in Asia. The anatomy of lions is very similar to that of a domestic cat. The knee joint in the lion is called the stifle joint, which is a joint that is found in animals, mammals with four legs. It is often the largest synovial joint in the body. This joint consists of the femoral-tibial articulation, femoropatellar articulation, and the proximal tibio-fibular articulation. There are between one and four sesamoid bones associated with the stifle joint, compared to humans who only have one. These bones assist with smooth movement of tendon muscle over the joint. The patella in a line sits in the tro clear groove of the femur. The angle of the knee and lines help them to make powerful movements such as running, jumping, and climbing up a tree. This is Landry Fox reporting from the Riverbank Zoo. This is Mark Lucas talking about common knee injuries. Common knee injuries include tearing the ACL, PCL, MCL, or LCL. Those are all, there are four types of stabilizing ligaments and a typical injury will occur when the foot is planted firmly in the ground and a twisting force is applied to the knee that is too great for the ligaments to hold. Patella femoral injuries include when the tract of the patella tendon isn't in the correct fashion and it is moving in a bent or sideways fashion and it causes inflammation and severe pain. Another type of uh, knee disease is called osgood slaughters when the patella tendon is on, pulling on the uh, tibial uh, tuberosity and it's uh, too much and this typically happens with young kids who have a softened bone. Um, other types of injuries are fractures and dislocations where the bone can crack and also the patella can actually be knocked off to the side of the knee and the only way to correct that is to have it um, to have somebody relocate the patella tendon back over top of the kneecap where it's supposed to be. Meniscal tears occur when in sports when you are moving side to side or lateral and the meniscus tear and that often includes tearing of the ligaments and tendons in the knee. Another type of injury to the knee is cartilage injuries where pieces of bone and cartilage break off inside the knee and a uh, typical way to treat that is through arthroscopic surgery and they go in and remove the broken part of cartilage or bone. This is Mark Lucas keeping it real with the knee. And that's all from the San Diego Zoo. We hope you've enjoyed our segment on the knee joint for the animals and the human and we will see you this time tomorrow at 5. And thank you for watching a Studios. Goodbye everyone.